Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is an RTC, a real-time clock breakout kit from Adafruit that I purchased and I'm going to assemble it and experiment with it. Let's see what we have inside. It only, it's only like maybe seven, eight parts. So we've got the breadboard. Got a coin cell. Coin cell holder. A couple of resistors. Looks like 2.2 Ks. Capacitor. Mail header. Oop, something rolling away there. And this is a 32.768 crystal. And the heart of the real time clock is this DS1307 from Maxim Integrated. And uh, it's a 64 by 8 serial I squared C real time clock. This can keep track of time, day, month, year. I guess it even accounts for leap year. Uh, it can't uh, keep track of daylight savings though. I guess because it's different wherever you go. But yeah, put this together and experiment with it. So the real time clock is good to have if you're going to keep track of time and you want to do date uh, time stamping or data logging. Now the problem with the Arduino is the microcontroller does have a built-in clock, but uh, it just starts keeping keeping track of like milliseconds as soon as you turn it on, and it loses that. It set resets it to zero when it loses power or you uh, reprogram it. I guess there are there are uh, other functions that keep track of larger chunks of time, like hours and and days. Uh, I don't think I've seen that information yet. I'm not familiar with with that. But again, once you would lose power or reset the microcontroller, the Arduino, you lose that information. You'd have to, first off, you'd have to write a program too uh, to use those those functions and, and uh, utilize the clock that's running on this. This here is power independent. It can last up to five years, I think, on this cell. And like I said, it keeps track of uh, time, the day, the month, the year. And uh, it's independent of whether you reprogram the Arduino or reset or lose power to the Arduino. So this is good to have if you're into, if you're going to be time stamping or data logging and, and need to keep track of time. So let me get started assembling this. So the first thing I want you to do is put a little bump of solder here to make uh, have a good contact for one side of the coin cell battery. That looks good. Next we'll add these two 2.2K resistors and the ceramic capacitor. Use my needle nose here. A nice bend in these so they fit. Might be able to just do it with my hand there. So I'll put these resistors in. I can line them up. the ceramic capacitor in. And I put the crystal in. There's no polarity on these. I can line it up. There it goes. Have it on the side like that. Now the clock chip is static sensitive. Be careful. Make sure you're grounded. And these pins tend to sort of flare out, so you can roll it on a flat surface a little bit. Try to square them up with the package, like this. See that? 
I'm just pressing it against and trying to make the pins a little bit more perpendicular to the package. Might have went over a little bit there. And there's a notch. You have to make sure to line up this notch with the notch that's on the uh, on the breadboard there on the artwork or the stencil. Okay, and it's there. It is. Got the notch in the right direction. So if I turn this over to solder the leads, I think this chip might fall out, so I'm just going to tack it in place on one lead. Okay, now I can turn it over. So you want to heat the pad up first and then have the solder go toward the tip, not too much. I think I'll cut those leads off. Nice flush cut cutters. Now I can get at the IC leads. The solder joint should uh, look nice and shiny. You don't want any cold solder joints. This one here I think needs more solder. Let's turn it over, take a look. So that looks okay. I have to put the battery holder on. So that just sits in there. I'll have to tack that on. It's going to take a little bit more heat because there's a lot of metal there. Oh, maybe I can do it from the top. See what it looks like. It's hot. Uh, I could probably add some more solder. So make sure you clean up your test area here. You don't want any of those leads that you cut off from the resistors and the cap to end up in your circuit somehow. So the last thing is to get this battery installed, see if it fits. Hopefully. I don't know how much pressure I can put on this. Oh, there it goes. That's it. I wish these uh, resistors were a little bit more flush. So I've got the RTC hooked up to the Arduino. There's four wires. You've got plus five volts and ground. And then the white wire here is the data wire. That goes to A4. And the green wire is the control going to A5. So let's look at a basic sketch that will print out the current date and time. And we'll be able to view that in the serial monitor program.
So this is an abbreviated version. I cut it down uh, from an example that comes with the Arduino IDE. So the communication, like I said, is only two wires. So it's via I2C and the wire library. So we include the wire, wire library with wire.h. And we also include, of course, the RTC library, dot h. Now here I think we're creating a named instance of the library, of the RTC library, uh, in this variable ds1307. I think that's what that's doing. The format's a little bit different uh, from when we use the servo, created a servo object. I'm not certain, but here I think we're making a decision uh, on what resources to use from the library, whether we're using an AVR or whether we're using um, I2C associated with the Arduino. Next, this RTC.adjust function uh, is going to grab the current date and time information from the PC and use that to initialize uh, the RTC, the real-time clock, when it's loaded. And now we initialize a loop and we have this RTC.now function that's going to pull the uh, date and time that the RTC is keeping track of and it's going to st store that in uh, date time now. And using a series of print statements we can now uh, say print serial.print now.month now.day now.year hours, minutes, and seconds. And this must be declaring them a decimal. And then we print a new line and add a delay 3000. So let's hook it up and upload the sketch. So upload the sketch. It looks like it's transmitting the date and time from the RTC. Let's open up the serial monitor program. So let's open up the serial monitor program. And there it is. That's coming from the RTC and not from the uh, laptop. So that's how you can add a real-time clock to your Arduino project. The one downside with this particular kit, it was only $9, but it's not too accurate. It loses a couple of seconds a day. Uh, there's another one that's about $19, and it's a lot more accurate, uh, if that's uh, really important. But this is a way to add real-time clock, so you can start uh, adding time and date information to data logging. So I hope you found this video interesting. Please subscribe and a comment and thanks for watching.